Right, we're in Jimmy's car at the moment. We've got a little misfire on the Clio, so we're just going to try and investigate that with our OBD2 hand scanner. Right, so we've developed a little misfire and we're just going to plug the scanner in. Okay, where's the scanner port down there? Okay, this is just a little handheld one. I'm going to turn the ignition on. You turn the ignition on, but you don't start it, and then you press the scan button and it goes through its procedure. Right, we've got a DTC, which is a fault code, so we're looking at that. We're just reading the code, it's a PO314. Right, so a PO314 is a misfire detected not specific now we had the same fault yesterday and it come up as a, a po 300 which as you can probably see there is a random multiple cylinder misfire detected and underneath our cover here we've got the um, ignition leads and they go down to a single coil pack which is mounted here so i'm going to suspect uh, a possible coil pack now we he's got a friend who's got one of these so what we're gonna do we're not gonna be able to do it today but we're gonna take that coil pack off of his car he's scrapping it and we're gonna put it on here he's had a misfire for the past few weeks on one cylinder and uh, it, it's something that could get gradually worse and worse and it appears that it has so um, rather than mess about we're just gonna try these second-hand parts when we get older and we can't show you that at the moment because obviously we haven't got them yet we're gonna be doing that tomorrow so that's what we're gonna change on this so we're happy with that so here we are again down Jimmy's unit we've got the scimitar in as you know uh, being prepped for a respray let's just show you around it just to see what we've done well it's a matter of just sanding down the paintwork as you can see very much like what I'm having to do with the uh, Reliant it's gone all the way around so far still got bits to do obviously but uh, as you can see He's been sanding this down with the old DA, which makes life a whole lot easier. So it's in the process of being done this, as I say. He starts and stops this as other jobs come in and out as well. So he's got another job here at the moment. This is one which uh, come in pretty recently and this bumper is red initially, so he's resprayed it blue. And as you can see, it's a lovely metallic blue. Got a lovely deep gloss on it. So as you can see, is this out of the gun, Jimmy? So this is purely out of the gun there, and as you can see it glistening in the uh, sun there. And all he'll do basically is just refit it back together now, which is going to put all the trim back on. And then, will you, uh, is there any need to buff that? So he's got a couple of dust nibs in it, so he'll just give it a little buff up. But uh, as you can see, the, the off the gun finish is very, very nice indeed. So as I'm down here, I might as well carry on and do a bit of sanding on the old trotter van. So I'll see you in a minute. things about he's got another van that's coming Yeah. 
Half past one, I've been standing for another two hours. Let's just get this van in there and carry on. I've only got a few little pieces to do, so uh, I'm enjoying the break. Get this one in. Big van, that one. Lucky I was here. Yeah, it's a long wheelbase. Look at the length of that thing, look. You might even have to go forward a bit more, Jimmy. All right, so coming around the old uh, trotter van now. As you can see, this side's now uh, fully sanded down. All around the doors as well, which was uh, an important part there. As you can see, all up and down there. I've left around these hinges at the moment. Looks like I did the other side because Obviously, when I turn it upside down, I'm going to have better access to these hinges. These are really, really hard as well. So they're going to need lubricating and um, freeing up there. But yeah, I'm pleased with it. So literally, I've just got around these lights to do and a little bit there. I'm going to wait for the front and rear valance until I actually turn it upside down so I can have, uh, obviously, better access at it. So yeah, I'm well pleased with it. And after I've just done these front bits here, I'm probably going to take out the electrics because um, I want to give the electrics a good overhaul as well. So I'm quite happy with that. So literally just that one there and this little bit here and then we can turn the whole thing upside down. He's had enough today as well. It's a lovely hot day. He's going to... What are you doing today? Going uh, to a concert show thing in Lincoln. Who's that with? Uh, two of her mates. No, who are you watching? <laughs> Stone Roses. Stone Roses. Right, okay then. It's the next day and I thought... As we've not started this for a hell of a long time, I thought we'd try and give the old Triumph Claim a start-up. So Gary went down and got some petrol, put some petrol in it. We're just going to connect up the jump leads now because the battery's totally flat. So let's just do that. Right, so we're going to jump start it off the uh, transit van. Right, check the oil and water. We've got both of them. So, uh, right, just start the old... Oh, yeah, I've got the keys over here. Start the transit van up. Right, so let's get Gary inside and let him to start it up. Let's just start a motor. I think I got a lazy start a motor on that one. Sounds alright then. Just give it a little blip, Gary. Rev's free enough, doesn't it? Yeah. Again, not like a, a modern car where you've got to, um, haven't got to do anything because it's got automatic fuel injection or choke or whatever. This thing, you've got to manually pull the, the choke flaps on the carburetor until it warms up and you've got to gradually do that yourself. We don't, yeah, you ain't got to worry about that with modern cars. But as you can probably see, it's hunting a little bit. As I say, because I've got to do the ignition timing. Right, so I'm going to leave that there for the moment. Anyway, at least we've got it started. That's the main thing. Right, so here we are back at Lawnmower Station. And um, I'll put the graphic on that now. It's only a little Honda graphic at the front. Gary's got the new belt for this now, so we're just going to put this belt on. So as you can see, it's just a bit of vinyl there, which I've done on my vinyl cutter. It just makes it look a little bit more finished at the end of the day, so... Right, so we've just jacked it up in the air at the moment, as you can see. Going to leave the blade on, but we can actually slide. Uh, we've got to remove this inner cover there, so he's going to do that now. Right, all that's all channeled up there. All that pulley wheel there is all channeled up there. I don't know if you can see that or not. That's obviously never had a belt on it for a long, long time. So, uh, very good chance this mower has been left standing for years and years by the looks of it. And now we've taken that cover off, if you can see, there's the... Uh, the gear which drives the wheels and that's running nice and freely if I rotate that you can see the wheel rotating nicely so there's no reason why this shouldn't be working when we've uh, done this and put the belt on right we've dug the uh, pulley out now and as you can see there this is the sort of thing we've got off of there look this has been uh, stuck in there obviously for years and years this looks like an old belt to me and where it's just been rotating and rotating the belt's obviously failed and 
it's made like a hard resiny sort of a uh, substance and that was actually stuck in the pulley so so we've just got to take the tension off of this ratchet mechanism there just so that the uh, spring mechanism can come forward a bit and then obviously tension it up again afterwards right so what we've done we actually put it on the bottom pulley first you can see we've had to come a fair way up with that adjuster but by getting on the bottom pulley it's easier to get it onto the top pulley secondly so if we just turn it around the blade don't forget the um, spark plug connector is out and there we go belts on right we're just going to test whether the final drive works and whether it needs adjusting before we put the final cover back on Well, that's it then. We're just going to put that plate on. You haven't got to see that. Lovely pull on that final drive as well, isn't it? Yeah, it's dragging me along. Dragging him along. <laughs> right, so there you go. That probably hasn't been working for years and years, going by the state of that uh, pulley we saw with that stuck in belt. So, just shows you. Probably not been working for years and years. And now it's going to probably be about a 170 pound lawnmower. Just with a little bit of work. Hope you enjoyed this video, and we'll see you again in the next video. And until then, bye for now. Thank you.